In this video I would like to show you how to away objects and at the same time twist the object. And this video is based on the really nice video of uh, Ali Torabi uh, twisting louvers. What you can see here uh, as a beginning I choose an object and I can just extend it and you can just see that the whole shape is, uh, shape is following and uh, in the next minutes I will, sh I will show you how I did it and I will also show you how to adjust uh, the twist and make it smaller and make it stronger and uh, how to have full control about this kind of shape. We will start with a really simple shape, a circle, and uh, this shape will have a radius of 50 centimeters. And then I draw uh, another circle of 45 uh, centimeters. And uh, these two circles I will attach. Uh, so first circle I have to convert to um, editable mesh, editable spline, sorry, and uh, then go to attach. And uh, now we have one circle, uh, which is uh, the starting point. I switch off the grid, starting point for our um, for our array. And uh, to make a 3D shape out of this, uh, this time I use my extrude modifier. You can see uh, what's happening. And uh, really important is that um, I have enough uh, uh, segments in this direction to be able to twist this object properly. And for this we just go into editable spline and we have uh, a look at this um, uh, steps and um, this is already a nice amount of steps but I can change this and for example go here and uh, see what's happening if I, I have 60 steps or probably 50 steps and I think this in principle should be, uh, should be enough. Just because we want to have a full control over uh, the twist of these edges or these vertices, it's important that we uh, select the vertices with uh, uh, soft selection and that we can change the amount of our uh, selection. And for this we use um, volume control, a really nice modifier for parametric design. It just uh, builds a shape around this object and in between volume control we can then s fix that we only want to select uh, vertex points and the next step we go into uh, soft selection so we have a but much better control of our object and can have a really smooth uh, transition for our experiment. So first we have to see what we can do with, with uh, volume select. First uh, it's good to understand that uh, volume select has a gizmo. The gizmo you can open in this menu and the gizmo just shows you actually what uh, you selected and you can transform the gizmo for example change the shape and for me it's important that when I twist my object and uh, we see here in the top view that I also would like to bend it around the corner that my gizmo still, uh, still includes all my vertices at the end of the day which should be twisted so I make it a little bit uh, wider in y direction and um, we can see this later. I don't want to have it on the full length. I only want to have it with one side. Uh, that's important. Uh, we uh, will have a look uh, later on what's happening. And the next thing uh, is uh, the red ones are selected 100%. And um, the more blue it gets, it gets the less uh, the vertices are selected. So you can see here what I'm doing. I increase um, the fall off and I decrease the fall off. For me it's still a little bit uh, too much in terms of the selection of the red ones so I make my gizmo slightly smaller like this and uh, play with this fall off and this is already a good basic setting. If I turn the gizmo or if I turn um, uh, my volume select modifier we can still see that uh, we are not finished because the whole shape is uh, turning. So when we want to uh, turn only our selection we need another modifier. We need the X-form modifier and this modifier applies uh, transformation to objects or also a selection of objects. I choose my X-form modifier and with this X-form modifier chosen I can go into the gizmo of this modifier and if I turn this around you can see that it only twists the selection 
of my volume select modifier underneath and that's exactly what we want. Okay, let's start with Power 3D. I uh, select this object and I open uh, this menu Create Parametric Array. I choose an account of um, this time uh, 30, uh, the original object I don't need, and I call this Power Twist. And next step, uh, step it asks me if I want to uh, keep the spline base. Uh, object information of my splines. In this term I don't need this so uh, I say no and I wait until my basic setting is there. Okay here we go. I always try to make uh, really simple settings in my video to make it not too complex or not too long. So what we do uh, like in other videos I go into uh, position and I will add a linear controller Lin like linear controller double click the linear controller is there what we can see is that it moved into the x direction if i would have turned this object it would have gone um, uh, in the into the other direction so uh, what i do is i just uh, choose uh, my last uh, array objects and i can uh, move it uh, up to this point and i go to update uh, array I can use this uh, this button here and uh, I have to wait a little bit again and of course with my step function I can adjust this properly. That's not so important to me. The only thing which I still would like to do is I would like to adjust it a little bit. And for this I use a setting which I normally don't use. This is this uh, animate button. Uh, when I activate the animate button I can just adjust it in my viewport uh, and it automatically adjust, uh, will adjust uh, the whole shape and of course the more complex uh, uh, my parametric um, object is uh, the more performance it will uh, uh, take and uh, so uh, it's a good idea uh, not to use this uh, on a regular basis even if it's really nice in terms of designing designing a shape. Again in this video I use um, the interpolate controller, it could be any other controller for example like in the video of uh, Ali Torabi twisting Lubus, uh, some curves, uh, but uh, for me it's uh, quite fast to use the interpolate controller and I have really good control about this. What I want to control is uh, the fall off of these uh, twist of the object and uh, then I would like to uh, control the twist. So just to see a result immediately, I start with my X form and I open um, under X form my gizmo and here I go into rotate. And if I activate X rotation, then uh, again I made a small mistake because uh, you can already see that the linear controller is uh, uh, here. This just means that under transform, I it's really important have to deselect position. And if I now choose my um, under X form a gizmo rotation, I can uh, see what's happening when I, for example, change the value of uh, the X dimension. And interestingly, just because I uh, use this uh, animate button, which only works if you have uh, a quite powerful computer, then you can see it uh, immediately in the viewport. And uh, this is uh, what, what's happening if I use my uh, X rotation. Uh, the next um, parameter is my Y di uh, direction. This is actually what I expected. And we have a last look at um, the X direction, uh, the Z direction, um, sorry. And uh, we see um, what's happening. It's uh, falling in this direction, it's just turning the whole gizmo. This is definitely something I don't want right now. And just to have a simple example, I use uh, the Y direction and I will add uh, again uh, uh, inter interpolate controller, uh, double click and uh, have to uh, select items I want to uh, control, for example like the first one and this one in the middle and uh, the last one, this one uh, and then I can start to adjust these uh, objects and for example go into uh, this one and turn the gizmo into an angle 
I would like it. Uh, I would like the object to uh, to behave. And uh, if I do this uh, for for the next uh, for the next object, for example, here I go also into the direction, uh, in the same direction, into uh, this direction, deselect, and then uh, go to auto update. We can see that the whole thing is already turning. Um, I will also turn the middle one and um, of course I think it could be a little bit more uh, a little bit more obvious and a quite uh, strong way and now again go into auto update and we can see that the whole thing is turning and we have a good control over the y direction. Two parameters we still want to control, and the process is uh, more or less the same. I can go to uh, now go to volume uh, volume controller, and uh, to my fall off again. It's really important that I deselect all other settings, and um, I choose these fall off. Um, apply the interpolate controller. Choose again uh, the middle one. Choose. Uh, the two shapes at the end, the beginning, and uh, then I can just adjust my uh, gizmo and, for example, just scale this gizmo. Now this gizmo is scaled and I choose uh, the one in the middle and also uh, here I will scale my gizmo a little bit. Okay, and when I now uh, go into auto update all controllers, you can already see that the whole shape changed. The last thing I do is um, scale my object a little bit, and for this uh, I go into the parameter like um, uh, a scale in my uh, transform, uh, transform area and um, um, again use my interpolate controller. Uh, attach all these uh, objects. You have to see that I really chose uh, the last one. Uh, it's actually uh, this one. And then I choose uh, the first one, which is uh, this one. And when I go now to the one in the middle, and um, I start to scale it, you can see what's happening. It's calculating and the whole thing becomes uh, a little bit like um, the lava of a caterpillar. At the end we uh, clear up a little bit our power 3D scene. I select uh, my node and all the controllers and with a right mouse click I can uh, go uh, to arrange and I can also say uh, filter unused channels and I uh, take again uh, range so it's a much more compact uh, uh, view at this um, at my um, at my path 3d scene and uh, what you can see is if there's a wet line that means that this parameter is uh, animated so if I zoom out again and I take this object and I just move it you can see that the whole thing is also moving because uh, I use the animate mode for my uh, for my linear controller.